Today we're on page 6 of our chapter 10 notes packet, section 10.5, inverse trig functions. We have arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. When you see these functions, it means the inverse of sine, the inverse of cosine, and the inverse of tangent. Arc sine means the angle whose sine is. Arc cosine means the angle whose cosine is. And arc tangent means the angle whose tangent is. So we're looking for an angle here. So if theta is equal to arc sine of square root of 3 over 2, then what angle is theta? What angle measure does theta have? Well, let's look at our, our trick table. All right. Let's do the square root of, we've got 30 degrees, 45, 60, sine, cosine, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, divided by 2. Okay, so what angle has a sine value that is the square root of 3 over 2? Square root of 3 over 2, that's an angle of 60 degrees, or pi over 3 radians. If theta equals arc cosine of the square root of 2 over 2, we're looking for the angle in which the cosine of that angle is the square root of 2 over 2. Cosine, square root of 2 over 2, is our 45 degree angle. You should always use your calculator to compute the angle of an arc problem. Use the second key before sine, cosine, or tangent key on the calculator. Right? Whenever we're finding angle measure, we just do second and then the trig function. So let's try these. Find theta in degrees, round the nearest degree if necessary. Theta equals arc tangent of 1, so we're looking for the angle whose tangent is 1. If you want to look at the trick table, or you might know okay, that the 45 degree angle has a tangent of 1. All right, but otherwise, if we're using the calculator, make sure you're in degree mode. All right, and now second tan 1, 45 degrees. Number 2, theta equals arc cosine of 1. What angle has a cosine value of 1? Second cos 1, 0 degrees. Number 3, theta equals arc cosine of negative 1 half. So what angle has a cosine value of negative 1 half? Second cos, negative 1 half, 120 degrees. Number 4, arc sine of negative 1 half. Second sine, negative one half, negative thirty degrees. All right, so negative thirty degrees, or if we add three hundred sixty to that and want a positive degree angle measure, three hundred thirty degrees. Got that simply by adding three hundred sixty to negative thirty. Number five arc tangent of negative square root of 3 over 3, so second tan, negative square root of 3 divided by 3, negative 30 degrees also, or 330 degrees. Number 6, arc cosine 0, second cos 0, 90 degrees. Number seven, arc sine of 0.34. Second sine, 0.34. Error, so I put in a negative. 
34 instead of a 0.34. Second sign, 0.34. 19.87, um, round to nearest degree, so this would round to 20 degrees. Number 8, arc cosine, negative 0.61. Second cos, negative 0.61. 128 degrees. Number 9, arc tan, 1.14. All calculator work here so far. Second tan, 1.14. 49 degrees. Number 10, arc tan, negative 2.3. Second tan, negative 2.3. Uh, let it round to negative 67 degrees. Or if we add 360 to that, 293 degrees. Now, number 11 and 12 ask for exact value. Okay? Find the exact value of the cosine of arc sine of 1 half. So we're looking for the cosine of the angle whose sine is 1 half. Well, let's do what's inside parentheses. So um, one angle has a sine value of 1 half. So we can do second sine, um, 1 half. And that's 30 degrees. So we're looking for the cosine of 30 degrees. And if we look up at our trick table, cosine of 30 degrees, square root of 3 over 2. Right. Whenever we ask for exact value, that's when we're looking at our special angles of 30, 45, or 60, or possibly quadrantal angles of 0, 90, 270, 360. I forgot 180 in there also. Um, number 12, find the exact value of cosecant of arc cosine of square root of 3 over 2. So we're looking for the cosecant of the angle whose cosine value is square root of 3 over 2. So again, inside parentheses, we'll do second cos square root of 3 over 2. Um, or you might even, since we just found that, um, what angle has a cosine value of square root of 3 over 2? All right, that's our 30 degree angle. So we want the cosecant of 30 degrees. If you don't believe me that that is a 30 degree angle, then we would just go to the calculator and do second cos square root of 3 over 2. So second cos um, square root of 3 divided by 2. Oh, that's our 30 degree angle. And now cosecant of 30. Well, remember, cosecant's reciprocal of sine. Um, so if we take the sine of 30 the sine of 30 is the square root of 1 over 2, so it's cosecant square root of 1 over 2, that's 1, one half, so the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. Cosecant of 30 is equal to 2 over 1, which is simply 2, so that's the exact value. Okay, next, going on to the next section. 10.6 is co-functions. Right. Any trig function of an acute angle is equal to the co-function of its complement. Remember, complementary angles add to 90 degrees. We have the function sine. Its co-function is cosine. We have the function cosine, its cofunction is sine. If we have the function tangent, its cofunction is cotangent. We have the function secant, what do you think its cofunction is? The cofunction of secant is cosecant. We have the function cotangent, 
its co-function is remove the co and we have tangent. The co-function of cosecant is secant. The co-function of sine is cosine. The co-function of secant, cosecant. And the co-function of tangent, cotangent. Now recalling complementary. Two angles whose sum is 90. If you have an angle of 35 degrees, what's its complement? You take 90 minus 35, which is 55. An angle of 10 degrees, its complement, 90 minus 10 is 80. Complement of 70, 90 minus 70 is 20. Of course, you don't have to write this every time. The complement of 63 degrees, 90 minus 63 is 27. The complement of 50, 40. The complement of 60, 30. The complement of 45, 45. The complement of x, 90 minus x. And the complement of 2x, 90 minus 2x. Okay, why do we need cofunctions? Well, for the following. We want to write the expression of a function of an acute angle whose measure is less than 45 degrees. Check your answers on the calculator to make sure the values match. All right, so a trig function of an acute angle is equal to the cofunction of its complement. So if we have the sine of 73 degrees, that is going, this is an, 73 degrees is an acute angle, but we want to express it as a function of an acute angle whose measure is less than 45 degrees. And 73 degrees is not less than 45 degrees. Okay, so we bring in the co-function. Um, the co-function of sine is cosine, and the complement of 73 degrees is 17 degrees. So the sine of 73 is equal to the co-function or cosine of the complement, 17 degrees. And we're going to use the calculator to check them and make sure our values match. So we'll just key in sine of 73. Look at that decimal. And then the cosine of 17. Our decimal should match. And they do. So the tangent of 48, the 48 degree angle is not less than 45, so we want to express it as the co-function of its complement. The co-function of tangent is cotangent, and the complement of 48 is 42. Checking, tan 48, cotangent, how do we write? cotangent in the calculator, that's a reciprocal of tangent, so that would be 1 divided by tangent 42. Same decimals. Number 3, the secant of 80. 80 degrees is not less than 45, so we express it as the cofunction. Cofunction of secant is cosecant, and the complement of 80 is 10. Now remember, secant, um, to key into the calculator, that's reciprocal of cosine, so to check on the calculator, it'd be 1 over cos of 80, and to check cosecant of 10 on the calculator, we would key in uh, 1 over sine 10. All right. Um, so I'm going to do 1 divided by cos 80. And 1 divided by sine 10. Or I could have put them in as fractions. Same decimals. If you want to, again, pause the video and try the next um, three on your own. The cosine of 65. 65 is an acute angle, but it's not less than 45 degrees. So we're going to express it as the cofunction of its complement. The cofunction of cosine, remove the co and we have sine, and the complement of 65 is 15.
checking that. Cosine 65 and sine 15. Good thing I checked. It's not 15, is it? I think it might be 25. Let's try sine of 25. There we go, that's better. All right? 90 minus 65 is 25, not 15. Cosecant of 70. 70 is an acute angle, but it's not less than 45 degrees, so we will express it as the co-function. The co-function of cosecant is secant, and the complement of 70 is 20. Pretty sure about that. Checking that, 1 over sine 70, and 1 over cosine 20. Yes, that matches. Cotangent of 89 degrees is going to equal the co-function of cotangent. Remove the co and you have tangent. And the complement of 89 is 1. So cotangent, so 1 divided by tangent 89 and tangent 1. Same decimals, they match. If the angle is not between 0 and 90, first get its reference angle, right? And then consider all students take chemistry for the sign, then proceed as usual. Okay, so the sign of 305 degrees. All right, well, first off, 305 degree angle is in quadrant 4, where um, sine is negative. So we'll express this as, um, this is going to be negative sine, and now we need the reference angle for 305. It's in quadrant 4, so it would be 360 minus 305, which is 55. Okay, so now we have negative sine 55. Now 55 degrees is not less than 45, so now we have to bring in the co-function. The co-function of sine is cosine. Bring over the negative, and the complement of 55 is 35. So let's go back to our original sine of 305, and that should be the same as negative cosine 35, right? So sine 305 and negative cosine of 35. Yep, same decimals. We know our value here. Our answer here is correct. Tangent of 110 degrees. Well, 110 degree angle would be in quadrant 2, where tangent is um, negative. And the reference angle in quadrant 2 would be 180 minus 110, which is 70. Oh, I forgot my, uh, I need to write tangent. All right, let's fix that. Fix that. Okay. So tangent of 110 is equivalent to negative tan 70. Now, that's an acute angle, but it's not less than 45, so we go one step further. Bring in its co-function, negative tan 70. Co-function of tangents, cotangent. Let's bring over the negative, so this is going to be negative cotangent, and the complement of 70 is 20. So let's again key in the original, tan 110. and negative cotangent 20, um, negative cotangent. So let's do this uh, negative 1 divided by tan 20. Same matching decimal. Cosine of 360 degrees. All right, 360. Well, first let's get a coterminal angle, all right? Uh, if I subtract 360 from 660, that brings me down to 300. All right, so I'm looking at the cosine of 300 degrees. Certainly not an acute angle. So 300 degree angle would end up in quadrant 4, where cosine is positive. So this would be equivalent to the cosine of the reference angle 
360 minus 300 is 60. So the cosine of 60 degrees, 60 is not less than 45, so we have to bring it down to the co-function. The co-function of cosine is sine, and the complement of 60 is 30. So this should equal the sine of 30. So if I go to cosine of 660, cosine 660, and the sine of 30, yep, they match 0.5. Number 10, cosecant of negative 60 degrees. Okay, um, that's going to end up in quadrant 4. And remember, cosecant's reciprocal of sine. So is it positive or negative in quadrant 4? It's negative. So this would be equivalent to negative cosecant, and the reference angle of negative 60 would be 60. It's acute, but it's not less than 45, so bring in co-function. Let's copy over the negative. The co-function of cosecant is secant, and the secant, um, so negative secant, and the complement of 60 is 30. So negative secant, 30 degrees. All right, now checking this. Okay, so I've got 1 over sine negative 60, and then negative 1 over cosine 30. That's what I'm thinking about keying into the calculator. All right, so I've got, um, what was that again? 1 divided by uh, sine negative 60 and 1 over, or 1 over negative cos 30, or negative 1 divided by cos 30. Yep, matching decimals. Okay, and let's see, um, number 11, secant of 275, 275 degree angle. That will end up in quadrant 3, where secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so cosine is negative in quadrant 3, so this would equal negative secant of reference angle would be 275 minus 180, which is 85. That's not less than, it's an acute angle, but it's not less than 45 degrees. So we have to bring in the co-function. The co-function of secant is cosecant, so this would be negative cosecant of the complement of 85 is 5, so negative cosecant 5 degrees. And we'll check that. Secant uh, reciprocal of cosine, so I want 1 divided by cosine 275, and then negative um, 1 over sine. So let's see, negative 1 divided by sine 5. Uh, something's not right here. My sign is wrong. Why is that? Oh. No. Secant's reciprocal of cos. Ah. 275 degree angles in quadrant four. All right. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, when I when I subtract it there. All right, so it should be 360. What was I thinking? Um, 360 subtract 275 is the 85. Well, hopefully you didn't follow me. You did it on your own and realized, Miss Montabano, you made a mistake. So, all right. Um, so now this is. This is correct, so the only thing now is that this is positive. Cosine is positive in quadrant in quadrant 4. So then that would be no negative, so then they would match up. 
Okay, we're 24 minutes in, almost 25, so we'll pick up with the last three in um, class tomorrow. Or you know what? Try them. Try them on your own and see if, um, if they match up with the, our answers in class tomorrow. Thank you very much.